Hi, and welcome to Teaching Tip Tuesday, brought to you by the Center for Inclusive Teaching and Learning at UWSP. As discussed in previous videos in this 2024 election series, tapping into the presidential election as a teachable moment will help support UWSP's vision and the Wisconsin idea. It can also stimulate student engagement by highlighting the real-life utility and implications of the knowledge, skills, and dispositions you're trying to get them to develop. But understandably, many instructors feel some hesitance because of the polarized nature of our current political discourse and increasing scrutiny in the state of Wisconsin about free speech on college campuses. This week, let's see if we can put any fears you might have to rest. In February 2023, UW System released the results of their survey of students at Wisconsin System Universities and the students' views on freedom of speech on campus. I've heard some robust criticism of the study, but despite problems that may exist, I think the data are useful in this context. University instructors are sometimes viewed by students as being politically biased, and this is a perception that we should be working to change. A quick recap of the data collected in the Freedom of Speech study shows that students' political views are associated with their perceptions of how free they are to express their opinions. Perception frames the reality in which we live, so pay attention to the rightmost panel in these graphs. According to the study, students who are more conservative are less likely to report that instructors encourage students to explore a wide variety of viewpoints than are more liberal students. Students who are more conservative are more likely to report that instructors discourage students from exploring a wide variety of viewpoints than are more liberal students. Students who are more conservative are more likely to report that instructors create a climate in which students with unpopular views would feel uncomfortable sharing them. Students who are more conservative are more likely to report that they feel pressure to agree with a specific political or ideological view that is expressed in class. Students who are more conservative are less likely to express their views on controversial subjects in class than are more liberal students. Students who are more conservative are more likely to withhold comment on controversial issues than are more liberal students. Students who are more conservative are more likely to report that they withhold comments on controversial topics because they're worried that other students will dismiss their views as offensive than are more liberal students. Students who are more conservative are more likely to withhold their views on controversial issues because they fear that instructors will give them a lower grade than are more liberal students. So what can we take from these data? Well, that there is a difference in how classroom practices are perceived by students that is related to students' political views. And perceptions matter. In discussing microaggressions and harassment, we always take the perspective that intent is not important, and only impact matters. In this case, I think we should apply the same lens. If a subset of students believes that they will be penalized for controversial views, or that diverse viewpoints are not welcome, then we need to change our approach somehow. So how can we do it right? If you're planning to use the election as the excellent teaching opportunity that it is, you need to be prepared to demonstrate acceptance of different views and to grade assignments related to political viewpoints in the most transparent and unbiased means possible. Let's begin with some ways to make sure that multiple points of view are considered in classroom discussions and that you, the instructor, are seen as impartial by students. First, establish rules of engagement in conjunction with your students. Having a mutually agreed upon set of assumptions, such as considering ideas, not people, and assuming good intent of comments, promotes more open dialogue, making students more likely to feel comfortable expressing their opinion. You can always refer back to these rules of engagement in tense moments to keep things from going off the rails. Next, practice active listening with your class. Active listening is listening to understand rather than to respond. Provide your students with a go-to list of non-judgmental questions that they can ask to help them understand diverse points of view without immediately expressing judgment. Using questions like, does everybody think that's the case? Or, is there another way we can look at this? Can provide impetus for students to detail alternative thoughts. You can also make use of a priori anonymous surveys that solicit different viewpoints from students. That way, you can introduce views if students are reticent to do so. Do not express your own point of view. 
Once your view is out there, it will affect student input. Let the students lead. View yourself as an impartial moderator who's helping students to construct their understanding and clarify their arguments. Interrogate all perspectives equally. Be ready to ask students, why do you think that? What evidence do you have of that? Tell me more about what you mean by that, regardless of the perspective they have articulated. It's easy for students to feel that their viewpoint has been singled out for critique if it's the only viewpoint you question. Next, disarticulate viewpoints from students. After a position is on the table, divorce it from the student who initially brought it up. Speak of the idea, not the person who generated the idea. This way, if others disagree or if the viewpoint is criticized by other students, it is the viewpoint, not the person, that is the subject of the criticism. Finally, a great idea for open discussion of diverse perspectives is to assign roles. Role-playing allows students the freedom to discuss these perspectives without having to own the perspectives. This can be useful in helping students understand arguments and evidence. Grading any exercises in which students are dealing with political topics can be fraught, but as in discussion, there are some simple ways to prevent partiality and bias and to encourage students to use their own authentic voice. First, be clear about what the purpose of the assignment is and how it will help students achieve specific learning outcomes. SIDL has some great resources for transparency in teaching and learning. Please make use of them. Next, be sure to develop clear, detailed rubrics for each assignment. The rubric should be focused on the learning outcomes that the assignment is designed to help students achieve. The specific position taken by the student shouldn't be material to the rubric. Instead, focus on the quality of argument, the use of evidence, logic, credibility of sources of information, clarity of expressing ideas, and things of that nature rather than the specific stance taken. Share these rubrics with students when you assign the work. If you haven't used rubrics in Canvas and would like some help, please contact Siddle. You'll find that it's a life changer how much easier grading becomes when you have a good rubric in Canvas. Next, grade anonymously. You can use the anonymous grading function in Canvas so that you're grading without knowing whose work you're evaluating. If you do this, make sure that students don't put their names on the assignments that they turn in because then you'll see them as material that the student has written. This will help to ensure that you're not unconsciously favoring or penalizing any students. When giving feedback, focus on the structure, logic, and evidence used in the argument rather than on the opinion itself. Open communication is important. Encourage your students to come to your office hours if they feel that their grade has been influenced by their political beliefs. Be open to revising grades if a student can point out bias or partiality in your grading. Take time to regularly reflect on your grading practices and be mindful of your potential biases. It might be helpful to have a colleague review your grading to ensure that your comments and assignment of points have been completed with impartiality. Finally, remember to always encourage diversity of thought. Make it clear in your syllabus and in your class that you value diversity of thought and that students will not be penalized for their political beliefs. Remember, the goal is to teach students how to think, not what to think. By encouraging diversity of thought, being transparent about your grading practices, and actively working to minimize bias and partiality, you can create an environment where students feel free to express their beliefs and to learn from each other. And that's this week's teaching tip brought to you by the Center for Inclusive Teaching and Learning here at UWSP. Remember at SIDL, we offer support for course design, learning activities, assessment, and pedagogy. Visit our website to schedule a consultation today.